Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by a nucleophile. You should then be able to describe the hydrolysis of haloalkanes by nucleophilic substitution. In the last video we started looking at haloalkanes. We saw that in haloalkanes the covalent bond between the carbon atom and halogen atom is a polar bond. This polarity is due to the fact that the halogen atom is more electronegative than the carbon atom. Because of this greater electronegativity, the electron pair in the covalent bond is closer to the halogen atom than the carbon atom. This means that the halogen atom has a partial negative charge, and the carbon atom has a partial positive charge. Now this bond polarity determines how the haloalkanes react. Haloalkanes react with chemicals called nucleophiles. So let's start by looking at what's meant by a nucleophile. Firstly, all nucleophiles have a lone pair of electrons, and this lone pair of electrons is attracted to an electron deficient carbon atom. Electron deficient carbon atoms have a positive charge, either a full positive charge or a partial positive charge. The nucleophile donates the lone pair of electrons to form a covalent bond between the nucleophile and the carbon atom. Ok, so let's see how this works. I'm showing you here the haloalkane chloromethane. As you can see, this has an electron deficient carbon atom with a partial positive charge. I'm also showing you a hydroxide ion. In the hydroxide ion, the oxygen atom has a lone pair of electrons and a negative charge, and the hydroxide ion is an example of a nucleophile. The lone pair of electrons on the hydroxide ion are attracted to the electron deficient carbon atom on the chloromethane. The nucleophile now donates its lone pair of electrons to form a covalent bond to the electron deficient carbon atom like this. Now I've shown the hydroxide ion forming the covalent bond from the opposite side to the halogen atom. By approaching from this side, there's less repulsion between the negative hydroxide ion and the negative halogen atom. Now we represent the movement of a pair of electrons by using a curly arrow, and you need to draw this very carefully. The curly arrow must start at the lone pair of electrons and end at the electron deficient carbon atom. Now a carbon atom can have a maximum of four covalent bonds, so at the same time, the covalent bond between the carbon atom and the halogen atom breaks, with the pair of electrons moving onto the halogen atom. This is an example of heterolytic fission. At the end of the reaction, we've produced an alcohol molecule, in this case methanol. We've also released a halide ion in this case the chloride ion. Because this has left the haloalkane, we call the halide ion a leaving group. As you can see, we've substituted the halogen atom in the haloalkane with a hydroxyl group. Scientists call this a hydrolysis reaction, and this is an example of nucleophilic substitution. Now, I just want to make a couple of points about this. Firstly, you need to learn this mechanism. It frequently comes up in exams. Secondly, you need to learn the conditions for this reaction. To carry out the hydrolysis of a haloalkane, we use an aqueous solution of hydroxide ions. For example, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide dissolved in water. Now there is a problem with this. Haloalkanes are insoluble in water. So we also need to add ethanol to the reaction. The ethanol solubilizes the haloalkane, so it can react with the aqueous hydroxide ions. To increase the rate, we heat the reaction under reflux. In the next video, we look at what determines the rate of nucleophilic substitution in haloalkanes.